Okay, so you want to know more about B12 absorption and B12 deficiency. Maybe you've been diagnosed with B12 deficiency or you have symptoms that seem to match B12 deficiency or someone told you to look into it. If so, the logical next question many people ask is how did this come about or why do I have B12 deficiency? You can guess from the title of this video that absorption of B12 is a common reason people have low B12. Hi, my name is Dr. Robin Terranella, and in my clinic I treat many different vitamin and nutrient deficiencies. In fact, these are my go-to treatment options for many health issues because they're so effective. In this video, I'm going to help you understand how B vitamin B12 absorption issues come about, how you can avoid them, and what you can do about it if you've already been uh, experiencing low B12 or you think maybe you have some. Okay, so first I'm going to list out the five most common uh, reasons uh, to have B12 deficiency, and then I'll explain a little bit more about each of them. Uh, in case people don't want to sit through the whole video, you can see them five listed out here. Um, so I'm going to attempt to point to these. Okay, okay. first one's caffeine, then alcohol, then uh, medications, then digestion, and then genetics. So um, there was no particular order put into the, or thought out for this, but that may be in relative, you know, relative commonality uh, for, uh, you know, most common reasons people have uh, absorption issues. But uh, I didn't put a whole lot of thought into that. But anyway, so um, so the first one being coffee and caffeine. Um, so it's a uh, Pretty common in medical school, at least in naturopathic medical school, to say that you know caffeine depletes your B vitamins and B12 levels in particular. Um, so it's a thing that sort of circulates, and I wanted to see if I could find some research to support this. Um, and uh, I did find some research. I didn't do a thorough, um, you know, exhaustive uh, search, but but it does look like. Um, B12 does have, or caffeine does have some impact, negative impact on the absorption or at least the serum levels of B12. Um, so whether it's coming about from poor absorption or increased excretion, uh, um, that part was not clear. But um, so I'll put that article in the description section in case you want to look at it. Um, this study in particular looked at circulating levels of B vitamins uh, in healthy men and women caffeine, or actually it was coffee drinkers, um, and they found that the people with the higher amounts of B vitamin levels uh, came down uh, more so than people that already had low levels or moderate levels. So it had a bigger impact on people uh, that already had higher levels of B12. Um, uh, there are additionally um, some studies that I've came across that uh, showed um, Caffeine and coffee consumers had higher homocysteine levels, which tend to correlate with uh, B12 deficiency and, in some cases, folate deficiency as well. So, so there's that info. <clears throat> so it does look like you know caffeine and coffee does have an impact on your overall serum B12 levels, whether or not it's from uh, absorption, where you know it's not as clear, um, but. Um, Next one would be uh, alcohol. Um, so alcohol does interfere with the uh, uh, absorption of B vitamins um, and does have a correlating effect on the serum uh, B vitamin levels as well. Um, and I did find a research article supporting this. This one is more uh, commonly found in well-documented in the literature, but I did find one study in Nature that looked at um, people that consumed one to three alcoholic beverages uh, per day over the course of eight weeks. Um, they did see about a 5% decline in their serum B12 levels, and obviously that would be cumulative over time. Uh, you know, eight more weeks would be five more percent, so it really depends, you know, how we're defining, you know, B12 deficiency on the reference range, you know, I consider anything under 
about 500 to be somewhat low. Uh, if it's below 300, then you know it's more frankly low. And if you're below 200, then you know that's even more of an issue. Um, if you're above the 500 threshold, you know you may be fine. You may not be having any manifestations of that, but some people do. Um, and we'll, uh, for genetic reasons uh, mainly, uh, which I'll get into a little bit more below. Um, so, <clears throat> so first two, uh, caffeine, alcohol, have a clear correlation with uh, decreased serum levels of B vitamins. Most of that's probably related to poor absorption. Um, <clears throat> the third one, which is definitely, uh, it's been well documented, the effect uh, on medications for absorption of, B, of B12 in particular. Um, and these are medications like Prilosec, uh, basically all the um, acid-reducing medications. So Prilosec or Omeprazole, uh, Ranitidine or Zantec, uh, Tagamet, um, Pepsid-AC and, uh, or Famotidine, I think is the name of that one, Nexium, all these are uh, gonna uh, interfere with the acid secretion and therefore reduce the ability of B12 to be mobilized from the protein source that it's attached to or, or whatever the B12 is absorbed uh, attached to typically it's in you know protein and animal products um, and it may actually interfere with the um, intrinsic factor uh, so, which we'll get into in the next section uh, when we cover digestion. But uh, most common medications, anytime people tell me they're taking any acid reducing medication, I always think um, B12 absorption issue. It also they also can affect your ability to absorb iron. So keep that in mind. Uh, so the fourth one is uh, digestive issues. Uh, there's a few that are particularly going to be more prominent than others. Um, so I think about, you know, when someone tells me they can't take B vitamins orally, uh, like when they swallow them, they get an upset stomach or something happens to them, uh, they just don't feel right. Um, usually I think that's related to some kind of bacterial overgrowth or could also be fungal overgrowth in the small intestines, um, which is where they're coming in contact with the B vitamins, um, causing that uh, reaction most of the time. So, um, so if you're experiencing that, um, you know, I would think about possible bacterial overgrowth. I mean, there's other reasons why you might have those reactions, but um, that's one. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, B12 kind of has this delicate uh, absorption issue anyways, uh, even if you don't have bacterial overgrowth, um, whereas it basically it doesn't absorb like other nutrients. It needs to be bound to something called an intrinsic factor. And the intrinsic factor binds the B12 and then takes it up into the cells. And the cells in the small intestine have, you know, lots of um, surface areas. So there's finger-like projections and hair-like projections and finger-like projections. So if you picture like the lumen of your small intestine, all these finger-like, hair-like projections are sticking out and that's how all this absorption happens. But if you have inflammation in your digestive tract, like Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or um, celiac disease is a common example where basically instead of having these finger-like projections, they shrink or actually become like nubs. There's nothing there anymore. And so you can't absorb your B12, whether you have intrinsic factor or not, um, because of the, absor you know, the absorptive capacity is so limited. Um, so... So any sort of inflammation that damages these finger and hair-like projections can potentially, you know, cause uh, absorption issues. So I mentioned bacterial overgrowth as a cause for people feeling like upset stomach, but it's also a cause for, you know, the, the microbes are eating those uh, B vitamins and causing some of those symptoms. So not only are you, are they, you know, consuming uh, the, the B vitamins, um, but they're also um, causing these other symptoms to come about. Um, so, um, and there is inflammation involved with that as well. So um, any of the you know, more classic irritable bowel disease or even IBS, um, we would think there may be some B12 absorption issues. Um, if you have known bacterial or fungal overgrowth, that would cause it too. 
um, basically any sort of inflammation that's occurring in your um, digestive tract would limit your B12 absorption and may um, be a real, really frank problem or could be more mild. Um, so sometimes it's hard to you know exactly quantify that, but we, we would suspect it based on having those uh, diagnoses. So, um, so that's digestive issues. Um, and then the last is genetic. So uh, there's several genetic things that can interfere with B12 absorption. There's one particular uh, single nucleotide polymorphism or SNP, uh, which is basically like a subtle alteration in your DNA that changes how the proteins are made. So a protein in your small intestine called FUT, or um, it stands for a particular uh, molecule that I'm not going to attempt to pronounce, uh, but it's FUT, and there's a few different variations of this um, that I'm not going to list out here, but um, if you've done, you know, DNA analysis, you'll see it on most of the common SNP analysis. Uh, FUT can increase absorption of B12 or decrease absorption of B12, and it's one mechanism is thought to be related to the B12 um, uh, uh, receptor uh, in the small intestine, and then another, which was pretty well documented in the research uh, that I found, um, that the uh, FUT basically makes you more predisposed to uh, <clears throat> to having uh, H. pylori infection, which basically then by default uh, impairs your ability to make intrinsic factor, and then you can't use that intrinsic factor to bring the B12 up into your small intestine. So, um, so FUT is one, uh, and then another genetic factor uh, that comes into play is pernicious anemia, which is basically when you have an autoimmune disease to the uh, intrinsic factor. So your immune system attacks all the intrinsic factor, leaving nothing to bind to the B12 to bring up into the small intestine. And um, so that would definitely be a major impairment to your B12 absorption. Um, <clears throat> there's several other things that can interfere with your ability to use B12. Um, and I get into that a little bit more in uh, some of my, um, uh, I have a book and a course on MTHFR and methylation issues that if you're curious about that, you can go on our blog um, at swintegrativemedicine.com forward slash blog to find out more about that. Guys, I wanted to quickly mention too that B12, uh, if you're having issues with absorption, uh, one common way or one way to avoid these uh, common issues is to just take the B12 under your tongue in a tablet form or a sublingual. That'll bypass all those problems, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so hopefully this video was helpful in understanding the common B12 absorption issues that many people have. I see it very commonly in my practice, and hopefully it'll give you some direction on what to do to you know avoid uh, getting your B12 levels low to begin with, or help you prevent um, you know that happening, or you know help you get the levels up uh, by avoiding those things. So if you like this video, please click on the like button. Um, and I'll be posting uh, more detailed information on B12 levels and how it affects your body and different things that uh, go along with B12. So if you want to be notified when those come out, then click on the subscribe button and you'll get a notification for that.